Hey guys, welcome back to the Fool Show. I just wanted to do, give you my thoughts after Michigan's 85 to 71 loss to Central Florida, and this game uh, follows the pattern again of other games we've seen from Michigan this year. And whew, it's just really disappointing to see the team play so the same patterns, and you're just hoping that the team can make a um, adjustment can address it but we'll see how it goes along michigan I, honestly i didn't see much of the first half because the tennessee purdue game went to overtime and that bumped the michigan state versus pit game to espn2 which put michigan on espn news which i don't have so i didn't really see for the first half so if there was anything super epic in there i missed it i was late caught you know listening to mgo blue broadcast of it on on radio and such but don't know all i know is really michigan was playing pretty good it was like a pretty competitive game michigan was leading 35 31 at half and definitely green for ucf was the player keeping them in range every time michigan would get a, a burst get up to like four five seven points or something like that green would just come back and hit a three-pointer he had 16 of their 31 points so I definitely green had to be addressed so, you know, the radio, when I was listening to radio, was saying, you know, they'll maybe put Eli Brooks on him and try to take him out of the game. Well, that failed miserably. Not only did Green stay on fire, then Mahan also got on fire. Those two combined for 53 points. And uh, they, I think they only missed five shots in the whole game. I think Green was 10 of 13 and Mayhem was like 10, 8 of 10 or something like that. And Michigan just could not... Justin, I know there's the two sides of things. If a team's just going unconscious, they're just hitting everything they're putting up, what are you going to do? But still, they were getting open looks. And it's like Michigan has got to adjust defensively to attack that better. Get your hands up. Close up, uh, close out on those players. Don't give them open looks at the hoop. This is just like what happened at Minnesota when I think it was Battle and Willis, who just like went on fire in the second half and just took a close game a game michigan was leading i think at the point and just boom blow the game open and michigan couldn't respond again michigan just like not 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 that they they even did anything remotely bad offensively if you will they they, they kind of got well, as many points as you would expect them to get but all of a sudden their defense just went completely awry it was crazy UCF hit all eight of their three-pointers. Eight of eight. They finished 60% for the game. They shot over 50% for the whole game. It's like crazy. It's like the defense, there were some good defensive plays in the first half. Those just completely evaporated. I mean, again, I just listened to it, so I can't tell you what they, how the first half looked compared to the second half. But it's just the same pattern where the team gets hot and Michigan just can't do anything about it. So, I like Juwan Howard, don't get me wrong, but it just made me think. He, he's really cutting his teeth. This is his first year where it's really kind of like him, right? Last year, if you quote Jim Harbaugh, maybe Juwan Howard was kind of like Ryan Day, if you will. And his quote about, you know, when you wake up on third base and you think you hit a triple. I'm not saying Howard thought that. But Howard went out and took John Beeline's veteran players, Wagner and Livers, and he got Chandy Brown, and he got Mike Smith in the transfer portal, and all of a sudden, you had this really good team. And now it's a lot harder. So, I mean, maybe Howard kind of has that a little bit, where, like, you know what, this coaching thing's a little bit harder than, you know, what it, what it was last year, because you had all these really good players. Now you got to develop them a little bit more yourself. A big question, I, I, I got to give Jones, Devontae Jones, I think he had 16 points. Michigan had four players in double digits. All the starters had double digits, but there's the problem. Caleb Houston had 0 of 7 shooting, 0 of 4 from three-pointer. He had 1.4 rebounds. I think you got to bench him for a little while. Let him just, like, sit on the bench because Bufkin's playing all right, and I wouldn't mind seeing... You know, Zeb Jackson play a little bit, too. He didn't even, I don't even think, in the stat list, I didn't even see him get a, in the game. Uh, maybe he did, and I missed it. But, what, what, I mean, if, if Houston's doing so bad, you got to play Buffkin more. 
he and it finished with eight points. The rest of the bench was one of six for the game, and I think the only one that hit that was Williams. Again, you have uh, our power forward Johns does nothing. Uh, our senior, he can't do anything out there. He looks completely lost. It's like it's just it's just it's mind boggling that this team had such high expectations, and they're just crumbling. I mean, it was insane. Uh, the TV has said it was like a four after Michigan did a nine to one run to start the second half. UCF responded with a 40 to 19 run, and obviously they the defense just totally went away. Like I said, they got 51 points I think in the second half. Ugh. Man, and you're just you're just not getting calls. This maybe that's another thing they just don't respect Howard. He's too young or something. He gets attacked for complaining about Williams, who it should have been a black call. The guy's foot was on the the, param, the, the block line, but the ref blows it. Those refs. I really wonder. I'm not going to blame this loss on the refs. Michigan didn't do good defensively, but it just makes you wonder. These refs seem really overwhelmed, and it just makes me wonder. I saw on the ticker the NBA has like 36% of their refs are in COVID pr protocols, so they're calling up G League refs. Where are these basketball refs coming from? Do they even know what they're doing? Because they seem to let big contact go, then all of a sudden they're touching. They're calling titchy, ticky tack. Fouls on Hunter Dickinson in the post. He got called for like a little like a bump, and then he got called for a little rap reach around. It's like it made no sense what the refs were calling. So I just wonder where these refs really came from because COVID's impacting sports, and that's one thing that you don't really think about is refs. So do these refs even co ref games at all? Because some of the calls they were making really didn't seem to make sense. A lot of bailout calls where people are just running and totally out of control and they get a foul call. Meh. I'm not going to take any oh, you know, blame on that because Michigan blew the game royally by not playing defense. Oh, Michigan's... I'm not even going to say they have to get things figured out. They're not going to get figured things out. This team, this season's going to be a train wreck uh, for expectations, right? Top five. You're hopeful that maybe you can beat Rutgers. Maybe. Maybe. Then you have Michigan State loss, Purdue loss. So if you don't beat Rutgers, you're going to start one and what would that be? Seven, one and four in the Big Ten. That's not going to be good. You start one and four, and you basically have like no chance at even making the NCAA tournament. So the, honestly, to me, right now the real goal is play 500 basketball in the Big Ten and make the NCAA tournament as like an eight, nine, ten, eleven seed. And maybe can build off that because this team is just doesn't have that defensive stopping in it. It doesn't have you. You lost Franz Wagner. He was awesome at defense, and it was a total joke. He didn't win Defensive Player of the Year in the Big Ten. You lose Livers. You lose you know, like you know Mike Smith and Chandy Brown, who are energy guys, and Chandy Brown especially came off the bench on fire and played hard. You just don't have that, and I don't. You know, it's not like you can just. Woo, pop one out of, you know, nothing. you got to have those people on your bench and on your team. And Michigan doesn't right now. And we'll see what happens. I don't know. This is certainly not the great start of a Michigan weekend we were hoping for. La yesterday in the one game Michigan played in the GLA hockey, they had a 0-0 draw against Michigan Tech. Then, obviously, blow a 12-point lead and lose by 14 points. All leading up to tomorrow. We'll see how that goes. Obviously, I don't believe it's in like dominoes that like the football players are gonna have momentum. Like, oh no, we lost momentum because hockey tied and basketball played a bad game. No, but <sighs> bit of a rant there. It's just depressing to watch that game. Just the same thing happened again and again, where Michigan just can't get a stop, and then they come down and they can't get a hoop. It's like so, ugh. you know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Put your comments in the box below. I'll try to respond as am I able to. Put this game behind me. Time to go to bed and get ready for Michigan versus Georgia tomorrow. Come on, Blue. Come on. Oh. <laughs> yeah, forget about basketball. Let's go football. Football. Oh, until I got. Until I see you next time. Go Blue.